How's it going? I am Dylan, this is Braid, and that's my cousin Carlo. This is All You Can Board, and today we're talking about our most anticipated board games of 2024. It's our annual tradition. It's kind of an annual tradition across the entire industry. You just see a flurry of most <laughs> yeah. anticipated games so that everyone knows what they need to buy this year, and you can't buy anything else. You can only buy the games we talk. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, we are going to talk about uh, 10 games each. We're going to go through them pretty quick because a lot of these games that we obviously don't have a lot of images for, a lot of footage for yet. In some cases, it's really just the designer that has us mm. interested. And I I know I don't know about you guys. I've mentioned this before. When it comes to games I'm excited for, I don't really consume a whole ton about them until I have them in my hands. So I'm not looking at PDF rule books. I'm like looking at just sort of the description, a couple little facts about them. Yep. If I'm intrigued, I wait until I have it in my hands for the rest of it. I don't really like to just sort of like look up everything ahead of time. I just like to sit down with the rule book the first time I get it and like set it up and kind of go through it that way. So I, I'm in a way not to spoil myself, but then also just to kind of keep that anticipation. I don't really learn everything there is about a board game. So this is more or just us telling you why we're excited and maybe it'll get you excited as well. Yeah. Sound good? So we're going to toss it to Carlo and he's going to give you his number 10 and we're going to go through the list all the way to our number one. All right, before the number 10, a couple of quick uh, honorable mentions to rattle off. Mm -hmm. So these were on my list last year for 2023. They didn't get released in 2023 and I'm still interested in them but just not quite top 10. So Rise and Fall and Bloodstones have both fallen off the list. And then the other quick honorable mentions are Undaunted 2200 Callisto. Mm -hmm. I didn't put this on here because it's a Basically, it's almost a retheme of a game I've already played a bunch, um, but the sci-fi version is what's making me intrigued by that one. And yeah. then the last honorable mention real quick is Galactic Cruise. The reason why I didn't put this on my list is just that one of the three designers uh, is local to us here in Winnipeg. Actually, I think both of you, or at least Brayden, you've met him yep. before, yeah. and he's a member of our Discord and whatnot, so uh, I just didn't quite... Feel, and I should say, I don't want to say this because you guys might have it on your list, <laughs> but I, I left it off my list just for that reason alone, but um, anyway... So my number 10 most anticipated game is called Square and Compass. So this is a, a worker placement game about architects. And it's kind of like a resource management. I know. Listen, when I first heard about this game, I was like, it, I, I looked at the box cover and thought, I don't know. And then I started reading up about it. And I don't have a ton of info to give you guys other than it's worker placement with architects. The component quality and sort of just the level of care and thought that has gone into the game looks like a really, um, just like a high degree of that. Um, and it's just kind of like, um, it, sound, it just sounds unique. It sounds like a type of worker placement game and type of maybe theme that I just haven't seen out there. It's got some contract fulfillment. Um, and I think it says on BJ that it's between like 60 minutes to like a, a two and a half hours or something. So it's just a very intriguing game. These number 10 through 8 kind of range is usually just games I'm curious about for like the novelty factor. Is it doing something different? So uh, I don't know what I'll end up thinking about it, but I'm definitely keeping my eye out for Square and Compass. Interesting. Sweet. Yeah, okay. sounds cool. Uh, it's just yeah. Really yeah. Uh, I haven't heard about this now. Unique, now I want to look. Enough, I want to watch up. this video after and hear you talk about it again. <laughs> Architects, man, they're yeah. interesting. Yeah. Well, you had me. You had me a worker placement. So. <laughs> I was gonna say I had your compass. But... <laughs> uh, my number ten is from Scorpion Masque. It is now with a uh, exclamation mark. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is a real time card game, very fast paced. I think it's like fifteen, maybe even ten minutes. I think the premise is basically. There's a target score that you're trying to get close to, and you're trying to swap out your cards in some way, shape, or form to get the best score. That's basically it. That's the game. Okay. I'm interested to see how that plays out. I like Scorpion Masque, the games that they play, the games that they have produced. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested to see how this one, if there's anything different or new to it. It's this one is very simple, way right off the bat. Yeah, yeah. Like, but I'm interested to see if there's anything to it. But you know what? We've had a really good track record with simple card games or simple games in general suddenly yeah. resonate. And so, yeah, you, you got me. I want to yeah. play it now. Now. <laughs> play it now. I want to play it now. Right. Uh, number 10 for me, already a Reiner Knizia game. Oh. Number 10. And that is a game called Amerabunta, I believe is what it's called. I got, I got wind of this actually just recently from, uh, I think it was Bitewing Games did their most anticipated games. This is from Space Cowboys. It's a Reiner Knizia game. Oh, um, it's, it's two players only. Um, and it involves, uh, I think, I think it's a roll and write, or yeah. If, it, yeah. So it's, if not, I was gonna say it's like heavy dice rolling. But yeah, it's a roll and write for Reiner Knizia. Um, and I'm just interested to see what Reiner Knizia is gonna do with the roll and write genre. He, we've played other games like uh, from Reiner Knizia that were roll and write, like Lost Days roll and write. Wasn't su super enamored with that one. But this one, the box art and the uh, artwork in general seems really cool. The components seem nice. There actually are images for this online. Looks really cool. And everything that was described about in the description. I just, I had, they had me at Roll and Write with Reiner Knizia with a unique uh, art style and take and not like it just being like a piggyback yeah. off one of his other games. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all in. 
this almost made my list because it's got I split you choose you roll six dice and you yes. choose which three that you keep and then your opponent gets the other three. Yeah, yeah, super cool mechanic and yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just Knizia has got me every time and so here it is. Yeah, another that's Knizia. fair. That's fair. All yeah. right, Marabunta, nice. <laughs> I like it. All right, my number nine is called the Morrison Game Factory. Nope. Wow, not <laughs> heard of this. <laughs> nope. So this is another one that's there for the kind of like. Maybe a bit of the novelty factor. Again, I'm always anticipating games that are doing something that I haven't seen before. So this is a very puzzle-heavy game. It's kind of like a puzzle and narrative game where you get this box of puzzles and it has a bunch of like hidden messages and riddles inside and that kind of thing. And it's actually about, the, the, the game is about an abandoned game factory. Like that's the theme of the game, but you open it up and have a bunch of stuff, almost similar to like an escape room where you're like, what do I do with this thing? What do I do? What's this thing here for? And it's just this, box of puzzles and you're trying to figure out where to start, what belongs where, what, how to make sense of this, do you need this thing for later, is this for now, and it's just a box of puzzles that you solve. I think it's one or two players. This um, sounds good. Sorry, what was the yeah, game name The again? Morrison Game Factory. Okay, my number nine is the Morrison <laughs> Game Factory. <laughs> Let me just... Yeah, uh, it's, wow. from a, <laughs> but yeah, it's from a publisher I've never heard of before. It sounds like it's kind of not breaking entirely new ground in the board game space, but uh, yeah, I'm always looking for extra little like solo type games like this to have around the house. Um, so yeah, Morrison Game Factory. Very interesting. I definitely want to check this one out. I did not yeah. come across it actually. Sounds good. So, cool. Very cool. Good find. My number nine is Quacks Das Duel, or oh, the German version of this. I forgot about this one. Oh, this, one this might have made my uh, list. I, I mean, there was a lot of competition, but yeah, this is a good one. I'm, glad I'm actually surprised. I haven't seen this on, on, I don't think I've seen it on anyone's list that I've watched at I least. I only just heard about it, yeah. Um, supposed to be released in 2024. It's it's a dual version of Quacks of Quedlinburg, period. Dual versions have <laughs> such a good track record. Well, not, I mean, not all they of them, do, but I just mean like, for the most Seven part. Wonders Duel and Splendor Duel have now spoiled me for like dual versions but of both, games. Both but. were Bruno Castala, correct? True, true. And I this think. one is not. He's not involved in this dual version. Not so. yet. Not yet. Uh, well, <laughs> They'll bring him in when they just didn't credit him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see what the, I've, there's a picture of the components already on BGG. It's interesting. It doesn't look the exact same. No, but it's different. But well, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Um, I mean, I completely forgot about this one. But uh, yeah, I'm glad you included it. Number nine. Yeah. Actually, I'm just kidding. My number nine. No. I'm just kidding. Uh, no. My number nine is a game called Apple Grove. Um, and the really funny thing about this is I had seen the box online because it was Andrew Bosley, and I really, really like him as, a, as an artist, and I kind of just like gravitate his artwork, artwork when I see it. Went to BC uh, here in Canada <laughs> a couple months ago uh, to visit my friends Dexter and Tim, and they're like, oh, our friend Joe's going to be there. And uh, I start uh, play some games with them, find out he's a designer, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm designing a game called Apple Grove. And I'm like, wait a second, go and look it up. Playing board, playing board games with the designer of Apple Grove. I had no <laughs> idea. So uh, I have met Joe and he's a super nice guy. Um, Apple Grove looks really, really cool. The artwork was what brought me in. The line, I'm gonna just read it because I can't remember it exactly. The line that kind of hooked me into like, yeah, I wanna check out this game was when it says, you'll roll the dice to determine which types of apple trees you can plant in your own personal orchard, but beware the unique color wheel mechanic means you'll need to think strategically about which trees to place next to each other to avoid being penalized and forced to build fences. I know that that in practice, I don't exactly know how it plays out, but just there being that kind of like we having to uh, plant next to certain things or build next to certain things and like the penalty being having to build fences instead. I'm, I'm assuming maybe if you build fences, then you can't plant a tree there now or something. I just, it sounds interesting. The artwork looks beautiful and, and he seemed really confident in the design. And I'm just, I'm excited to play it. So that's uh, nice. Apple Orchard, yeah. Cool. Nice. Just name dropping. Oh, I met this design. <laughs> no, <Here> we'll <laughs> Which is the cool thing. <laughs> yeah. All right, my number... Apple Grove. I said Apple Orchard, too, at the end. It's Apple Grove. Did you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> my number eight most anticipated game is Robomon. Nope. <laughs> no? no, I haven't heard this. No, no nothing, I, nothing. I don't have this Pokemon. So, well, yeah. So it is honestly, I think it's supposed to be kind of a play on Pokemon. It's a sort of open world exploration game that looks like it's it. The artwork looks like it's the sort of what, not eight bit, sixteen bit graphics from like the Nintendo Game Boy Pokemon games. Okay. So you think about like Pokemon. As soon as I saw this cover, I thought, oh my god, it's Pokemon Red or Yellow or whatever. So, and I think that's what they're going for. It's a, it's this world of these robotic creatures that, that evolve and have kind of like there's there's a very limited amount of story and a limited amount of info in general on, about it on board game geek 
but there's a bunch of people who've played the print and play version already who are like swearing by this game. The designer seems like he's put a lot of time and thought into this. And then people started saying like, hey, I'd like to see more games like this done in like, what about in the Zelda universe? And he kind of commented saying like, oh, don't worry, there's already a bunch of other kind of uh, worlds or themes that I'm exploring for future editions of the game. So it sounds like this might birth a whole new system. Um, and he said that a lot of the, it's like apparently very narrative and a lot of the story comes through as you explore the world. So this one got me purely on the nostalgia of playing those old Pokemon uh, games on Game Boy and whatever. So yeah, if you haven't heard of it yet, I highly recommend you check out Robomon. I think it's only one or two players. Robomon. Damn, it sounds good. I hadn't heard about this one either, but now no, I'm not yeah, intrigued. Check it out. It's, I think you guys as video gamers will be intrigued by this. I'm anticipating these games yeah. so hard right now. <laughs> You're selling me hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, my number seven or eight? Seven. Eight. Seven. Eight. 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 I can't count. <laughs> Give us whichever one you want out of seven. Yeah, eight. no. That's, uh, <laughs> it's going to be Scribble Me This. Yeah, you guys, yeah, This course. is great. I'm yeah. learning about yeah. so many Scribble games. Me this. this is from uh, Pipnetic Games, or just Pipnetic. They're the publisher. Yeah. Uh, you may uh, recognize the name Steve Flynn, who helped design Biblios. Steve Finn. Steve yes, Finn. I recognize Sorry, him by his Finn. correct Sorry, yeah. Finn. My bad. My bad. It's all right. Just kidding. I'm going to edit it out. <laughs> Steve it's okay. Finn. You can also edit out what I called the last one, Apple Orchard, instead of Apple Grove. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, that will stay. That, that's going to stay. Uh, You're going to zoom in on my mouse saying Orchard. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen and Zach, uh, I think it's Guido. Uh, this is a game where you everyone has a riddle on their card and the answer on the back of it. And you have a pad or something to draw on and what you're going to do is you're going to look at the answer and draw the answer to the riddle okay mm -hmm. everyone does this and everyone turns over their riddle card so you only see the riddle and everyone puts their drawings in the middle and what you have to do is try and match it, someone's drawing to the riddle so that you okay. think that their answer matches that drawing in some way shape or form that's it hmm. so it's kind of like it's kind of dixit Ask, I would yeah, say, yeah, yeah. but there's some drawing involved, and I'm assuming because of how these riddles are formed, the, the answers are probably not going to be necessarily straightforward. Right. Mm. So it's going to be like it's going to be similar to like Pictomania or Doodle Dash or something, where it's okay. like you drew that for that. That makes no sense okay. whatsoever. Is it kind of like the telestrations thing kind of, too? I think so. Well? Yeah, it's something. It's something it sounds along, cool. Along, yeah. along, along, along no, maybe lines. this is a Steve Flynn game because it doesn't sound like a Steve Finn game. <laughs> <laughs> this does not sound like something that Steve Finn Steve would design. Finn. Steve Finn. Steve Finn. Steve Finn. <laughs> Finns are friends, not food. Um, yes, yeah, Steve Finn. Scribble, scribble me this. Uh, nice. You know what's really funny is my number eight is also a Steve Finn game. But not with yours. Phil Walker Harding. With Phil Walker called, Harding, I know exactly. Called yeah. Cities. Yeah. Uh, I knew this would be on Dylan's list. Yeah. yeah so okay. I found out about this one pretty recently too. I, I, it was on my radar, and I think maybe someone that you had made mention or someone had mentioned, and I forgot about it. Looked it up. Uh, yeah, I'm intrigued. I, I honestly, the main I I know very little aside from Steve Finn, Phil Walker Harding, and Devere, all of which like I I have a lot of respect for. I'm yeah. I'm looking forward to based on that. But it is a city building game as well, and just growing up with things like SimCity and loving that as well. I think combining my love for that genre with board games, with two designers I really really like, with a company I've liked their games, it's just a recipe for success for me. So uh, very little images or like content out that I've seen anyways. I, I don't know if it's been demo in place or people have had their hands on it but I certainly haven't yet but it's definitely on my radar and as soon as it uh, we can get it I'm going to be wanting my copy of it because honestly it's been a while since I played a new Phil Walker Harden game in the last couple that I played um, aside from like his um, modules in Fjords yeah. um, I haven't they've been okay but the, the last like couple was yeah sort of... they've been okay they've, and, and for a while he was like I was just like Phil Walker Harding yeah. Phil Walker Harding and so I feel like I, I need I need there to be one <laughs> yeah that, that, I, <laughs> that's what he would say Phil Walker Harding I was walking down the streets and people were like what the, <laughs> Phil Walker Harding Phil Walker Harding like over and over that's just what I do uh, but yeah I'm just excited I hope this one lands with me because Stephen too his, the, the games I played from him really really liked yeah. that combination of designers super exciting yeah. Yeah. Steve Flynn though not Steve Flynn yeah. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I mentioned this one was like around number four 14 or 15 when I was putting my list yeah, together. Yeah. So I'm yeah. very intrigued to try this one as well. All right, number seven on my list is one that Dylan and I both had on our list last year and it did not get released. That is Let's Go to Japan. So this is designed by Josh Wood, who did uh, Cat Lady. Um, and it's basically a little tableau building game about uh, going on vacation in Japan. Um, you're basically playing over 13 rounds and you're going to be placing a card in your tableau every round. 
kind of going out from left to right. And then once the rounds have been uh, played out, you're going to basically go through your cards one at a time. Uh, I think it's also from left to right. Um, and sort of trigger them and see what you did kind of on your vacation. From everything I've heard and read about it, it just seems like a really relaxing, just kind of chill tableau, laying, uh, tableau uh, building game uh, with some really nice artwork. And part of the reason we were so excited about this is that it seems like with the fact that it's like, let's go dot 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 to Japan made us think it's probably the start of a series. So maybe they'll take it to other places as well. So um, and yeah, we're fans of Josh Wood. Um, yep. So that's let's go to Japan. That, and I should, I want to quickly mention, because I didn't do my old mentions, it wasn't my list last year. I, I took it off merely because there's so many games I wanted to include and talk about that I just didn't want to, this one specifically put on two years in a row, but it, it's one of my most anticipated games as well. Yeah. Speaking of two years in a row, my number seven is was on your list last year, uh, and this is Redwood. Oh, yes. Which I think maybe really, it, it hasn't released yet, I think in Canada at least. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure exactly. This it's not like widely available. Cusp. Yeah. But this is about taking photos of wildlife and nature, yep. and I, I I love the concept of that. Yeah, and and it, and the, it like you it like lets you it captures the aspect of having different lenses on your yeah. camera and everything by how much you can see. It, yeah, this one is another one I I took off merely because any other games on, but it's still one that I just ugh, I want to play it based on the fact that like loving cameras, yep. love photography, yep. combining that into board games. I mean, I just, I'm just curious and to see if it can pull off everything it says it's going to do. Yep, I won't speak too much about it. I just like to see how it combines and how it kind of plays out too. Yeah. So you're kind of guessing on where you're going and. Cameras and board games. That's the that's recipe our, that's for success. Our motto. Yeah, <laughs> that's our motto. All you can board, cameras and board games. <laughs> uh, number seven for me is a game I actually just found out about too, uh, and that is called Fromage. Uh, so Fromage is from, uh, I want to get started, Matthew O'Malley and Ben Rossett, and it's uh, published by Road to Infamy Games. So the main reason I'm, I'm excited about this is it's worker placement done with like a lazy Susan in the middle of the table. And you are, I think that uh, essentially what I, if I'm understanding it correctly, is you're playing to the side of the lazy Susan that's in front of you. And then that lazy Susan is going to spin and then you're playing it to workers to a different aspect. And so everyone's playing simultaneously, mm -hmm. but only to their area that's facing them. And then it, ch it switches around and then that's going to change throughout the game. That just sounds novel to me. Sometimes those things end up being gimmicky and they don't, you know, in, in practice end up being as effective as they kind of sound. But it, it, it's interesting. It looks cool. And a, worker, a, a new spin on a worker placement game is something I'm always going to be interested in just because I love, oh, and you spin on a worker yeah. placement. Yeah. It's always the accidental puns for me and it's always the intentional puns <laughs> for me. Um, yeah, I just like, as soon as someone has a different uh, idea for that genre, I'm going to be intrigued because it's one of my favorites, but there's just so many of them that I think, it, and plus the artwork and everything about it looks really gorgeous. And the idea of a lazy Susan coming with it is just a really good table presence as well. So yeah, that's from Ash. This one saying. just missed my list. Very, very close. And these are the designers who did Between Two Cities, Between yeah. Two Castle, Matic and Ludwig, uh, Search for Planet X. Like they do really great, really interesting games. Yeah, looks really cool. Yeah. From Ash. All right, number six on my list is one, I'm expecting at least one of you to have this, okay. probably Brayden more likely, uh, is Kelp. So this is a two player only uh, asymmetrical, I think it would fall under being an abstract game. Um, basically it's the sharks versus the octopus. Um, and so as the octopus player, you're trying to sort of evade the shark and kind of just sneak around. And as the sharks, you're obviously hunting for the octopus. Um, it's a first time designer. I think his name is Carl Robinson. The artwork looks awesome. From what I've heard, my first impression when I first heard about this on Sporadically Bored Podcast, it sounded a little simple, like not too simple, but I'm saying like after reading into it, it looks like there's a lot more depth than I initially thought. Yeah. And I've heard that like the more you play it, the more strategies you start to see are possible with each of the each of the sides. And the rules are actually pretty gritty in terms of learning. Like even as the octopus player, you really need to know what the shark player can do and vice versa. So yeah, yeah it just looks like a really uh, interesting take on that. And we're big fans of two player abstract games. So it's one I'm very eager to check out, especially the asymmetric aspect is kind of reminding me of like the God powers in Santorini and that's yeah. right away it just calls to me. So yeah. that is Kelp, which I fully expect one of you to be talking about sooner rather than later. I think this is my number 11. <laughs> oh, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it's, in, it's interesting. I'm interested to try it for sure. I just know you're, you're a big know. two-player abstract. I, it is, I am, I am. I, I just am. thought you are like big into octopuses, so like... Yeah, <laughs> I'm well... <laughs> oh, and if anyone has seen that Netflix documentary, My Octopus Teacher oh, or whatever, yeah. apparently he took stuff from there that like he implemented design decisions of how the octopuses work based on like behavioral characteristics that you see in that documentary. Wow. 
Sold. So it's apparently like Sold. fairly thematic too. So yeah. anyways. Very cool. cool. Very Tell cool. Them. Check it out. Uh, my number six has already been talked about. It's Cities. Ah, uh, nice. <laughs> crossover. Yeah. Double crossover. D -d 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 Double crossover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and why are you excited yeah. about Cities? Uh, the designer, Steve Finn, mm -hmm. Phil Walker Harding, combined together, mm -hmm. city placement, drafting, put them together. Yep. Recipe see. for success, hopefully. Let's see, right. let's see what you got. Uh, my number six is going to be quick as well because believe it or not, my number six is kelp. Nice, <laughs> there it is. So I was yeah. wrong about who would have uh, it, but you basically summed it up. The bit, the main thing that attracted me here was because at first I, I heard about this game multiple times before I was ever interested in it because I never even really looked into it. I don't know what it was. It was similar to another game we covered too. And I, th I think I was mixing them up for a while, uh, Octopus's Garden and stuff. I think I, for a while I was like mixing up the games. But the thing that attracts me here is. Two player only game with uh, ace, like uh, asymmetry. Is yeah. that, yeah, <laughs> we mix yeah. that up in asynchronous. Yeah. Um, the fact that each player is going to be different. Like anytime I played a game like that and being able to kind of dive into either side or, or into one heavily and, and understand the strategy, I just really like that. And really strong two player games are something you can never have too many of, at least for me in my collection. So I've been hearing a lot about Kelp. It looks really cool. Excited to play it. Nice. And you like octopuses. And I love it. Yeah, no, exactly. I like sharks, yeah. you like octopuses. That's oh, why we need to play it and battle each other. Right, okay, got yeah. it. And by the way, for anyone who wants to listen to an awesome interview with the designer, go listen to that episode of Sporadically Bored. It's really good. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, my number, getting into the top five now. My number five is one that I'm, I'm not sure whether it's going to be on either of your lists. It is called The Old King's Crown. So this is a game that I had seen the box art for many times. I'd seen it pop up on BGG in the past and never really looked into it enough. Um, and I did recently, and... It is a lane battling game that you can play, I think it's solo or up to four players. I think BGG has it listed as best with solo or four, I think. But it's a lane battling game with some betting and bluffing. There's hand management. Uh, the basic premise is that the throne is vacant and you're basically trying to vie for, for power. Um, that's pretty much all I know in terms of like the way the game actually plays. But it looks like a head, like when you look at the complexity level and the time the game takes and you look at photos and stuff, it looks like by far the most complex lane battling game that I've ever seen. And when we talk about all the ones that we've played that we like, you know, games like Battleline, Radlands, Airland and Sea, whatever, all these types of lane battlers, like this just looks like it's a totally like in its, in its own league in terms of like how big and complex the game is. So that's what has drawn me to it. The Old King's Crown. And it just looks awesome too. The artwork's fantastic. I do like me a lane battling, so I'm intrigued based on that alone. I fully expect this to be much higher up. My number five is from Bitewing Games. This is Cascadero. Uh, not Cascadito, huh? Not Cascadito. Because mm -hmm. Cascadito is the role. Yeah, no, I'm just giving you our time. To I, 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 honestly, I was stressing over. I was like, <laughs> I need to make sure I get this right. But it's also not Cascadendo. Uh, no, no. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. no, 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 no. That one, that one's done by Steve Flynn. Oh right, okay, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> no, uh, Ryan Yurkinita, Tiling. That is all I looked up into this game because I know I'm going to play it. I am that I am shielding the rest of my eyes, <laughs> my knowledge on what's going to happen for this game. That's yeah. all I need. And to, to be know. fair, with Kanitsia games, especially with Kanitsia and Thailand games, you almost don't need to know more because even if it does end up being like the best Kanitsia game, you almost can guarantee you're going to have a good time. <laughs> like that's, yeah. I mean, maybe not guarantee, but. Nine times out of ten, if you have Kanitsa and Thailand, you're going to have a good time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cascadero. Nice. Number five. Number five for me, I hope this isn't to me breaking some rules here, because technically this is a re-release of a game, and the Kickstarter campaign's already oh. happened, and this is a late addition to the list. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Um, but I don't own a copy of it, and uh -oh. I played it for the first time. It's in Carlos' collection, but it's a new uh -oh. version, and that's called Through the Desert. Uh, oh, so Through the Desert I knew, I knew. has a new it's version. A that year old game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It went on. It went into Kickstarter. It's a new version. They have really gorgeous components, and this version has new uh, modules yeah. in it that you that yeah, aren't yeah. in the original. And apparently, they're really good. So. Um, I played through the desert really recently when we were filming this video, loved it, um, went and looked into it, found out that I somehow missed, I think you mentioned there's a reprint and that made me go look up, found out I missed the Kickstarter. I'm going to try to get my hands on this uh, this copy. Um, if you're watching this video and you're uh, Reiner Knizia and you want to send me one, that'd be great. And also, <laughs> and also, I don't think he's the one who sends <laughs> yeah. games, I think he has hey, publishers who do that might. for him. <laughs> and if you're watching this video and you're Reiner Knizia, I mean like, can I get your autograph? This is amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah, honestly, I just... 
I loved it so much. I want my own copy. And because there's this new version with new modules, I'm just interested in it. You have the older version, so I don't feel like super inclined to necessarily have to get that version. If there is right. this other one, it'd be great to kind of compare them too. So Through the Desert, the new version, I'm late to the party on this, but it was so good in the new version. New version looks great. Yeah, amazing game. Mm -hmm. All right, my number four is, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this properly, Terra Pyramides. Oh yeah. So this was a game that. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's yeah Dylan my, knows I'm pronouncing it correctly. It's not on my list, but I've talked about it in one of the games I'm excited yeah, for, and yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, yeah. So I was gonna say Dylan talked about this recently in in uh, it was the, it was the hype list video, right? Yeah. Um, so tile lane game from Kramer and Kiesling. If you watch this channel, you know we're big fans of Kramer and Kiesling. Uh, Renature is a top 10 game for me. So this game, it doesn't look all that similar to Renature necessarily, but um, you are basically, the long and short of what I know of it is that you're placing a tile on the board and then you're gonna activate surrounding tiles nearby based on where you've put this one tile. So you're basically placing tiles to create these kind of chains where you're gonna activate a whole bunch of other tiles. And again, pyramids right in the title, you're building upwards so you can build uh, these tiles up into multi kind of level stuff. And we've seen that with Acropolis recently. I've heard about it in other games that I haven't played. Like they've done Torres, I think, back in the day. Um, but anyways, Kramer and Kiesling always have that very Kinesia-like mm -hmm. level of like very simple rules, but really tough decisions, a lot of tactical play with having to reassess what you're doing and adapt on the fly. So uh, I'll leave it at that. But yeah, anytime these guys are designing a game that's tile laying and kind of around this playtime and level of complexity, I'm, I'm in. Yeah, I feel I feel really bad having left this off, but it was literally the last one I cut for the ten. It was more just like there's so many there's so many good games. Yeah, so. yeah, that's fair. And like the artwork, it doesn't look super exciting looking at the art cover and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I'll, I, let, I'll give you a pass on that one. I had considered it, but I figured that it was going to be on your list, so I was like, oh, I don't need. Yeah, that. we don't need to anticipate each other's <laughs> games, right? Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, my number four might be a bit of a cheat, honestly, because it's not a new game. I'm a cheater here. It's not a new game, but it's an expansion to a game. Okay, that's fair. That's allowed. I think this that's is, allowed. This is, this is heat, <laughs> heat heavy rain. Oh, okay. And yeah, that's yeah, new yeah. tracks. Well, have to consult it, with the okay, judges, okay, but okay. I mean, we'll, well, yeah. Okay, in, in that case, my number four is kelp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear expansion. Dear expansion. Uh, heat heavy rain, adding two new tracks: Japan, Mexico, adding a new mechanic of a uh, fully wet tracks, uh, a seventh player orange car, new uh, upgrades that you can add to the game as well. Yep. I love heat. Let's get some more heat. Have... So does this mean that if you could just play the heat expansion or not play anything from number six down <laughs> oh. or whatever, you'd pick oh, the yeah. heat expansion Ooh. over the new games? Look at Rather Carlo. than sticking with base heat and playing the other Carlo's ones? going for the that's kill a, here. That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good question. Base heat over the other games? Carlo came to fight in this video. <laughs> We're going to take a brief break, let Brayden ponder this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. his brain here. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> I'm excited for it too. Remember, this auto th automatically leaves out kelp. You can't play kelp if you get the heat expansion. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> oh, he's really yeah. anticipating this I'm one. I'm good, I'm All good. Right. Yeah. No, I, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to try it out. Okay. My number four um, is, I think, the heaviest game on this list. And um, it's really one of the main reasons I'm excited for it is because I have not got a new Stefan Feld game in a long time. Mm, um, and this one looks heavy. It looks really cool. It looks very involved. And I'm ready to just fall in love with another Stefan Feld game. Hopefully, this will be the one. It's called Civilution. Um, oh, it's, yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's, called, it's called a medium to heavyweight. I think it's ranked like a, a weight four uh, out of five on BGG. It's pretty heavy. It's, it's, it's got a, it's got like a solo mode too. It's of. one to four. Honestly, it's like a civilization game, but I think futuristic or like a, a, or space involved as well, or if not space, like like just mo not modern day civilization, right. like more futuristic civilization. Um, I don't know beyond that a whole lot about it. Stefan Veld has a very distinct style in his games. I've liked, um, I don't know if I've liked every Stefan Veld game I've played, but I, I haven't played a lot of them. But for the most part I have, and I've always kind of left impressed and, and not really disappointed. So I think it would just be nice to kind of unbox a really big Stefan Feld experience and then be the one to teach it and play it. So that's why it's on the list. It looks really cool. I've heard a lot of other people talk about it. Stefan Feld, I, I was sold on that. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wasn't in contention for my list, but it's one that I am curious to wasn't try. Wasn't in contention. Mm. Not no. even you didn't even think for a second. No, out of second. like the base forty or fifty that <laughs> yeah. I started with, and I trimmed down from there. Nope. So it, it's on your top fifty most anticipated games. Well, I said forty or whatever my short list was. No, it wasn't. Wow. No. 
You know what? I just never know what to expect okay. from Stefan Feld. Let's remember this moment here. And when, when, <laughs> when you play it, if you end up being like enamored by it and it like makes your top 50. Then I will write him a personal yes. apology. I will no, email. no, no, no apology. You just, you just have to write him a letter saying I really like your game. That's all. <laughs> you don't have to apologize. Yeah. No, you don't have to apologize. Record, Record the yeah. entire video yes. of apology. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, exactly. okay. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Number three on the list is the only one, I think, no, I guess with the Let's Go to Japan, this is the second one that I've carried over from last year, uh, and that is Skyrise. So this is a game that um, Dylan has actually backed on Kickstarter, and we're waiting for. It's a game that I regret not backing, because everything I've read about it since the campaign ended has just made me progressively more and more excited about this. Um, so it's a, this is actually kind of a remake of a game called Metropolis. I don't know how much they've changed uh, from Metropolis, but it's a sort of spatial auction game with area majority. It has all these different buildings with different numbers on them. Um, I'm not going to try and explain the rules because honestly I don't know the rules, but everything I've heard about this game um, just it really intrigues me. Again, that, that auction aspect and the, like, the area majority, the competing over the shared area with your fellow opponents, and the way the game looks, it just looks stunning too. So um, yeah, this is one we've been wanting to play for a while, and hopefully your Kickstarter copy comes in soon because I can't wait to try Skyrise. Table presence and auction are the, yeah, the main things. And I, this is one of the ones I bumped off my list just because it was on last year. I'm still, it's one of my most anticipated games for sure. And I'm getting a copy, our friend Corbin's getting a copy, he backed it as oh, well. Right. Okay. So we've got a couple of copies. Well, well, if either of you guys don't like it, I might yeah. end up taking yours <laughs> yeah. off your hands. And even we'll if we see. do, you might just snatch yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, my number three uh, is a double crossover with Dylan. That I've already said? Yes, you have. This is a <laughs> Reiner Knizia game, and I've been very bad because this is oh. the new reprint of Through yeah. the Desert. <laughs> 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 These uh, guys. Oh, with the expansion, though. Yeah, and that exactly. makes it new. And new box art and everything. Yes. And new box oh, that the, it comes the box in. Art is amazing, the cardboard honestly. is a different quality. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah, I mean, we recently played. I'm sure that's this is absolutely factored into this. Yeah. Um, but I think just having the it be available now a little bit more after playing it it was just I'm so excited. good too. It's, it's so it good. was like a, yeah one play of it and i left being like this is a game i could see myself playing many times like i yeah. really really like yeah. it yeah yeah great choice great that's, choice and not all, at all illegal. that's all I need not at all illegal. not at all <laughs> totally legal <laughs> we'll still be consulting with the judges on that one. yeah <laughs> uh my number three uh, is a might might well not for this group but might be one of the most anticipated board games collectively for next year in the hobby. Um, comes from a, comes from a company called Leader Games, who, oh. made, a, who made a game called Root, uh, yes. and that is their newest game called Arcs. Uh, I am really pumped for this game. I feel like the more I, and honestly, I'm so upset at myself for not backing this. I'm gonna have to see if we could somehow get our hands on a copy of Leader Games. If you want to send us one, that'd be amazing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly. Arcs, everything about it is uh, exciting me, but mainly it is the thing that you can do a single session or you can do a campaign session, but a campaign session is only three games. Yeah. And that's super digestible. And the track record the leader has with Ruth, which I love, and Oath, which even though it's a game I don't often get to the table now or, or at all, I don't know if I will again, I'm so impressed by so much of Oath's design and, and what that game did and, and the, the storytelling aspects of it, that the fact that you're gonna have these like mini stories that kind of go over the arc of three games, or you can sit down and do a single one and there'll be some changes in between each game, I'm sold. Uh, I have trust leader games a lot uh, based on their track record. And I just think that this is one that also, if it's really, um, if it is well received and, and people really love it, you know they're going to support it going forward because of how much Root's been supported. So I can see myself loving it and then being excited to see how they expand on it. So I'm ready for ARCs. Um, hopefully we get our hands on a copy of it in sometime in 2024. Cannot wait to play it. You know anything about it? I have. Did you even consider it for you? Huh? I've got more to say on it later. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have put you on the spot. <laughs> I respect so much about Cole Worley and Leader Games, but I don't know if their games are for me. I guess I've only played a couple of them so far, but so I'm intrigued by ARCs, but not super anticipating it. We'll see. Number two on my list is a game in the sort of key series. We've talked a lot about Keyflower on this channel. Number two is Key Side. So this is by Richard Brees and David Turzi. Apparently this game has been in development for a long, long time. There's not a lot of info on the BGG page for it, um, but this one works with primarily with dice. Um, I got the impression it has, the way it describes, the way that you're kind of competing for spots with your dice and your workers gave me a similar feel as the betting with the colors of meeples. 
um, in Keyflower. I don't know exactly how it works, but David Turtzi is like he's been involved in tons of those uh, the games in the T series, whether he's designing the solo mode for them or actually involved in the actual design. So he's kind of like one of the masters of. Uh, I would say like using dice in a more like modern and more unique way. Yeah. So that's really intriguing. And the fact that Richard Brees, who like other than the games in the key series, hasn't done a ton of games. And Keyflower is the only one in the key series so far that I've tried. But um, yeah, I just can't wait to try Keyside. This is one I don't even know if it'll get released in 2024. Could be one that slips yeah. into 2025, so we'll see. But uh, yeah. Those are the, the two reasons I didn't put this on my list was one, I didn't know if it was going to be released in 2024, and, and based, there seemed to be some uncertainty of release. And two, I have only played Key Flower, and I didn't want to let that, like, I'm super excited for Keyside, but I was like, like the other ones I've heard mixed things with. Sometimes people will say this one's really mm. good, sometimes people say not. So yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, am I gonna put it on there just because of the, the key aspect, which like I, I probably should have, and I bet you this is gonna come out, I'm gonna love it, and then I'm not I'm gonna be really upset that I didn't anticipate it. But uh You don't yeah. be upset for not anticipating no, no, you I just will. didn't play it. I'll, <laughs> I'll be so I'll be like, I wish I, I wish I would have anticipated this game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's so good, but I just didn't anticipate it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm I'm glad it's on your list. Someone had to talk about it, so that's great. Uh, my number two is from Peter C. Hayward, the designer of That Time, that time you, you Killed, killed Me. me. I know which game this is. This is from All Play. This is Things in Rings. This is that kind of a different. deduction, yeah, deduction game um, <laughs> where one person is like the knower. So they know how you have these three rings basically, and they have different subjects that overlap in some certain way. Mm -hmm. And everyone else is trying to write objects and placing them in these rings. And depending on what stays in there, what leaves from the knower, right? Because they know what how everything should be in there. They try to deduce what the categories are from that. So okay. just be, that's it. That's the game. It's kind of like a party style game okay. that you're trying to figure out what is going on where. I don't know much more beyond that, but that concept in and of itself already yeah. intrigues. I mean, that concept with the designer of that time you killed me sells me alone too, because yeah, the, yeah. even yeah. like that time you killed me. It, I, I liked it. It's not like it's I'm like I'm in love with that game, but the design itself and the way it, it functions, I think is is pretty great. And that that designer then going into like a party style game like the way you're describing, yeah, sounds great. Yeah. yeah. Seems like a guy who's trying to design, like bring some brand new ideas to the table. Mm -hmm. so very, Which is always really intrigued. good for a hobby. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, number two uh, for me has been spoken about. This is a double crossover with Brayden that uh, I'm surprised isn't on your list, but I guess there's one more spot, so maybe it's going to be oh. that last spot. Uh, and that's Cascadero. Uh, Reiner Knizia, almost bookending my list with starting with the Knizia and ending with the Knizia, pretty close. Uh, but yeah, nothing else I can really add here aside from the fact that as soon as I hear Knizia, as soon as I hear Tiling, and as soon as everyone is talking about it, especially where it seems, not that that dictates it, but usually the, there's a reason there seems to be hype, especially around a Knizia game. I'm sold. I, I feel like this is going to be one that we're going to be all excited to get on some level and play. So, Cascadero. Yep. Cool. Mm -hmm. Son of a gun, I'm in! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, into the number ones. And the number one most anticipated game for me, triple crossover, ja, 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 triple. is Cascadero. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, like these guys have said, Kenitia and Tai Lang, what more do you need? Even if this ends up being his, like, sixth or seventh best tiling game that's still like <laughs> better than most games that most designers could ever hope to design in their entire careers so like yeah I would, yeah the guy's a master of tiling and uh we've really enjoyed what bite wing has done so far uh especially the recent re-release of zuvadas i just kind of knocked it out of the park with that so um yeah for anyone who wrote the doctor off years ago you were wrong. He's yeah. he's back in a big way. He's the just doctor's designed. in. He, the doctor is in. <laughs> the doctor's in. The doctor is in. So yeah, we will definitely be playing a lot of Cascadero as soon as we get our hands on it, and we you will hear us talk about it a lot on this channel. For sure. Um, One thing. Oh, just well, last thing. It got compared a lot to Melee Fiori with the kind of combos, and yeah, I, I last year I didn't even put Melee Fiori on my most anticipated games list, and then it was like my number two game of 2022. Yeah. And last time we were hanging out, Carlos was like, I wish I would have anticipated <laughs> this Yeah, game. I saw, man, I wish, <laughs> why don't I anticipate? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I, uh, I made a mistake of underestimating him once, I won't do it again. Can you really love a game if you don't anticipate it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, my number one, you guys probably already know this, this is from Whirly and the Gang. <laughs> <laughs> Leader Games, this is They were Arts. gonna send us a copy until you said that. Yeah. Now they're gonna send us two. <laughs> no, Arcs. Uh, and I, the reason I'm anticipating this game, 
so much is after playing Oath, I haven't even played Root, man. Mm. I think, actually, it's the only, now that I'm thinking about this, now I'm having like an immediate realization, is <laughs> the only Cole Worley game that I played Oath? It might be. Probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I, I had so much respect for the design of Oath. Yeah. I immediately puts me into a high anticipation mode for arcs. I've watched uh, Cole Worley play this on his Twitch channel. Oh, wow. Um, like some of the prototype yeah, stuff, yeah. talking about the game already, trick taking with war, area, maj- like, I don't know if it's area majority, but like you're trying to take over spots. Like, those mechanics put together, I'm so interested to see how they make that all work and then that combined with, you know, yeah. playing three games three on top thing, of everything yeah. like that. Like, And there's a lot in the DNA uh, from Oath and from Root. There's like, even if it's not full on big mechanics, you can just tell that, in the same way that Oath had things that kind of like, you're like, oh yeah, like now that I play Root, I'm like, I see how they borrow things. There's certain DNA that goes through all of them and it's usually the, the parts of DNA that I like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, no, no. Which, <laughs> which parts are those? Yeah. Uh, like you know the you know like you know how the DNA goes like this and it spirals oh, down. Okay, okay, there's okay, there's okay. the lines that go in the middle. It's those parts of the DNA that right, really right. Yeah, yeah, have yeah. a thing on they bridge, screen with them. Because they bridge <laughs> the gap. It makes yeah. sense. That's what bridges all the strands. Oh, Here's root. Here's arcs, so here's that, oath, and the lines bridge together. But you don't know together. the name of this DNA. <laughs> no, I'm not a scientist. Uh, okay. uh, I'm glad it's on your list. I'm it's excited the to play it. nucleic acid, the different types so that yes, match there you together. Go. Anyway. That's what I meant. Uh, I'm just totally BSing, yeah. Arcs, very excited to see what they come up with. And of course, the art, just yeah. keep on giving it to me. <laughs> awesome pick. My number one might not come as a surprise to anyone at the table. It might not come as a surprise to anyone who watched my uh, oh, hot right. list video or, or my one last year, because this was my number one most anticipated game last year. I am almost almost 100% confident it is delivering this year, and that is Queen's Dilemma. Uh, I was a huge fan of King's Dilemma. It was on my top 50 this year, even though I didn't play it this year. Um, it, it was on the year before as well. It actually moved up spots because I'm reminiscing about King's Dilemma. Queen's Dilemma is taking everything King's Dilemma did. It's uh, adding more. The main difference is that King's Dilemma took over the... Um, took place over many, many reigns. So it's like over centuries is how long King's Dilemma takes place and you keep adding new uh, kings into into power. Queen's Dilemma is actually one reign. It's one reign of a queen oh. and rather than it being like, you know, the, the king or the queen is dying and then a new one is that, like, or abdicating and a new one's taking the throne, it's one reign. But they're taking everything that people loved about King's Dilemma Add in more, more surprises, more envelopes, more changes. Uh, and in a campaign game, when you have more envelopes, sometimes that's all you need to hear to be excited because the envelopes and opening those up and seeing what you're going to get is so damn exciting to get me every time with that. Uh, honestly, I'm just super excited to get a group to the table for this again because the discussions we had around the table with King's Dilemma were some of my most memorable uh, gaming uh, moments from, from that year. So, um, yeah, I can't wait to play it. And honestly, this is one I, I would love to actually set up a camera when we're, when we're playing and actually record some of the sessions because I think it'll just give people a better idea as well if they haven't or they're curious about it just how much that the group can really make or break that that experience because it really is how much the group chooses to not necessarily role play but just really get into the spirit of the game mm-hmm. yeah I think uh, around next holiday season, I'm just going to send you a bunch of envelopes with like different things <laughs> yeah. in them. And you'll be like, ooh. Honestly, yeah, there doesn't have to be anything in them. They just yeah. have to be sealed. That's yeah. right, yeah. If anyone wants to just send me envelopes with like, even I don't care what's in them. Just send me some envelopes so I can be like, ooh, what's in there? I just love opening envelopes. And basically, if your game has envelopes, it's, it's just a bunch of names. It's going to be anticipated. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, maybe put a cryptic symbol on the front to keep them guessing. But. Yeah. That's Queen's Dilemma, my number one, again. And hopefully it won't be next year because I'll be playing it, and then it'll be me talking about the actual product rather than me saying I'm anticipating it. That's it. Those are our most anticipated games of 2024. As always, a little caveat. In three months, there might be new games announced that we just did not know about. That happens every year. We This is just as of right now when we're recording this in January 2024. Of the games we know about and have been uh, told about or seen uh, other people talk about, this is what we're anticipating. Let us know if we, if we missed any that you were expecting to be on our list or maybe that we don't even know about that we can then add to our list. That happens to us every year. Someone puts in the comments something, always makes us go check it up, and the next thing you know, we've learned about a game we otherwise didn't know about. Let us know what you think and let us know of the ones we've talked about here, which ones you are now going to go and uh, buy yourself when they come out or put on your most anticipated list. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>